Well, good morning, Ja. How are you today? You look inquisitive. You're probably wondering why I've been running around the house. Well, it's maybe not. Well, I was just going to tell you, Valley Relics Museum is opening up. Finally, they're able to open up. They're doing an open air museum, and I want to go check it out. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I really wanted to come out here and support this, especially because he has been covering the rent while this has been closed for months. And he has two airplane hangers, so I can tell you that's multiple thousands of dollars, if not in the double digits of thousands of dollars per month. He's a good guy. Tommy Galinas is a good guy. Awesome! I am so happy to finally see a museum open in California again. I can't tell you how much I've missed this. And this is one of my favorites. And we're taking all the precautions. All right, here we go. Ah, I love this place. For things just like that. The old big boy, but then you have the Jack Oakey Gallery who the people that are now in charge of all of Jack Oakey's possessions and everything, they've been absolutely cool to me. We keep meaning to come in here and do a vlog so they can explain to me the significance of all the things in this case, and we just haven't had a chance to do it. There you can see Jack's telephone from his bedroom. He and his wife actually had separate bedrooms because he used to have to wake up so early for being on set that uh, he just got used to that lifestyle. Look, there's a cane from the movie Harvey. You see that? The great Jimmy Stewart movie. And then a cane from The Great Dictator, which Jack Oakey was in with Charlie Chaplin. There you can see Jimmy Stewart in the picture with Jack. Jack's back in the corner. And then all these mementos all are labeled as being like gifts from different people. Like um, this right here says it's a gift from Mary Pickford and Buddy Rogers. That cigar case back there. And the table lighter has a sign that says from Spade Cooley. And then over here, these really interesting cufflinks are from Donald O'Connor. And take a look at that, Jack's Paramount Studios keychain. So this is Jack Oakey. Internationally beloved actor was born here. Oh, his birthplace, okay. And then this little toy here says this was a gift from Jack Dempsey, world champion boxer. And then that says Jack purchased William Hopalong Cassidy Boyd's Beverly Hills home for his mother. So I ran into Tommy out front and he said that uh, they were able to open for Father's Day and then they had to close again and now they're open again and all of the pinball machines here, they have a lot of classic pinball machines, are all free and they're going to be sterilized down all day. These are from the Queen's Arms. It says, there's a spectacular Disneyland-like spot along Ventura Boulevard between Havenhurst and Libet Avenue. And there it is. I just love, he has so many signs from the valley. If you don't understand, it's like, the valley is a very large chunk of Los Angeles that really should be its own city, but because LA wants the tax money, they won't let it become. But the valley is a pretty amazing place and it has its own history. That's Jan, Eve Plum's door, her bedroom door. Some of this stuff I've shown before, but I haven't been here in over a year, if not two years, so. Radio City Music Hall. And then this case is dedicated to a lot of the westerns that were filmed here in the valley. One being the Rifleman, look at that. Johnny Crawford. There's Chuck Connors, back of his chair, and it's signed. And then there's a picture of Chuck Connors, the rifleman. 
And the rifle. And there's Chuck and Johnny Crawford. We went to his grave if you want to check it out. Go to my channel and look up Chuck Connors. Oh, of course, you can't forget Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody show. And the real McCoys. There's a hat from the real McCoys. The well-known Lone Ranger. This is Butch Cavendish from this show. And then this cup is remembering the Melody Ranch where they filmed a lot of shows out there. Most recently, I believe they were doing Westworld TV show out there. And I love this case, check this out. You've got scripts from Eve Plum and Maureen McCormick, that was Cindy and, or I mean, uh, Marsha and Jan Brady. Then you have some of the facial prosthetics from Planet of the Apes. And them talking about how Roddy McDowell, these are all his, Roddy McDowell was doing photography and documenting a lot of this process, a lot of the making of that. So you can go on YouTube and see a lot of behind the scenes stuff because of Roddy. And then up here you have items from Barbara Eden. And then gloves owned and worn by Lucille Ball. Hefner shoes. Man, that is Phyllis Diller. At least her wig. And then down here you have a Billy Club from the Keystone Cops. And then this receipt is a withholding certificate for Desi Arnaz when he lived out here. You can actually see the address on there. On Devonshire. Now in this section they have a dress that belonged to Sharon Tate. That was Sharon's dress. And they show that because, of course, she was killed by the Manson family and they were up at Spawn Ranch, which is here in the valley in Chatsworth. And here's a great case showing mementos from the Brown Derby and its original location but check out some of the drawings you can see that was Betty Davis and she had signed it down here in the corner those were the caricatures they would put up on the walls Jack Lane was the artist and of course you have to have Gene Autry and some of Gene's boots. Yakima was like, he was the stuntman that made everything happen. And a lot of movies that were really, really popular because of the adventure scenes, they were because of him. He was a stunt double for John Wayne, William S. Hart, Clark Gable, you name it, pretty much anyone he did. He kind of created a lot of the stunt techniques. And there he is. Right there in that picture. That's him falling off the horse. Being tangled up in a horse in a scene from the Wild Bunch. That was his expertise. Everything that was dangerous was him. This is his makeup kit. Take a look at those two signs. Wild Bill. So here we have the Hollywood Stuntman Hall of Fame sign. And then right here we have some stuff from Gunsmoke. Look at that. The back of James Arness seat and Ben Bates. There's a script down in there. We have a prop gun. And then we have Signed photo, and uh, one of Marshall Dillon's costumes. 
And over here, they have some really great things. They have the uh, costume from a restaurant here called Country Star. I would have eaten at a place where the people dressed like this and said how they uh, dressed in the 1940s. Look at this Universal Monster sign. Isn't that great? And then look, a case dedicated to Glenn Strange, who was the Frankenstein monster. Boris Karloff had grown weary and fearful of his Frankenstein creature typecasting him. So Glenn was the perfect replacement for the job. He debuted with House of Frankenstein in 1944 and followed it up by, with House of Dracula in 1945. It was he who played the creature in the cult classic Abbott and Costello, Meet Frankenstein. Pretty cool. And then here he is in the makeup chair. And here he is in House of Frankenstein with Boris Karloff. That's interesting. Boris looking at his former character. Now this is super awesome. I told you this was gonna be open air. They've opened up all the sides to the museum and everything now. They have a good draft coming in, but this was created by Nudie, Nudie Cohen. You'll see a car in here that Nudie did, but Nudie was famous for doing Western suits for everyone. Porter Wagner, Dolly Parton, Buck Owens. Roy Clark, you name it. Elvis Presley's Gold LeMay suit, he did it. Graham Parsons, he really had his hand in a lot of people's costuming. But he made this for Roy Rogers and Dale Evans Museum. Isn't that cool, the Double R Ranch? And as we move along, I love the way they display everything in here. There's a Ferris custom sign. We've done a ton of vlogs mentioning him. And then they will advertise many of the old muffler shops and various places that used to sponsor sports and, you know, kids' baseball teams and stuff. They have all that stuff here. I love that. Really remembering the whole valley. And those are the same shirts, not these exact shirts, but these are the companies, these are the sponsors that they sell shirts of here now. Things that are long out of business, you can get their t-shirts here at the museum. They said these used to be at the entrance to New Hall, when you entered New Hall, they would bookend the road that you drove in, I believe is what they told me. Let's see whose police motorcycle this is. Huh. You think it's from Chips? These are promoting the Saga Speedway. Very cool. And then Magic Muffler. As you take a turn down here, I see, never noticed that before. That must be relatively new, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And then we have the Grand Prix, Malibu Grand Prix. Look at that. <laughs> the wall of televisions. That is so cool. Take a look at that. CBS, ABC, Channel 13. That's funny. Someone with a wall of TVs here. And then look. Some of this stuff from the old Trapper's Lodge. 
Now I've done a vlog on that, but this was stuff that, well, let's put it this way. I heard through the grapevine that the family members of the man who created this place, when things were being donated, they weren't quite sure that everything would be properly taken care of, so they took some of it for themselves to hide away, and that's what these are. Because I went out and showed you guys where the, uh, the park is and everything, and that was him! That was the guy who created all this. And all the bikes hanging from the ceiling are because of the BMX bike races that used to be part of the culture here. See what I mean? I love all the old signs here. This is showing some of the Lockheed history here. Mickey Mouse Courier Service. Oh, these are old street signs. And this to me is one of the best kept secrets in this museum is that they have some of the original signs from the original Bad News Bears, including Toby's uniform. There you can see his cleats, his hat, back of his director's chair, well, not director's chair, actor's chair, <laughs> and his uniform. There he is. What a great freaking movie. Probably considered insensitive now, but really funny movie. Walter Matthau is just unbelievable in it. Take a look at the old Henry's Tacos taco signs. Those are great. And then he has ashtrays and menus and pretty much everything that you can think of from any memorable valley restaurant. Places I've never even heard of. Gump's, The Hangman's Tree, Poncho's, Smokey Joe's, King's Arms, Phil Oz, Moongate, Cisco's. Here you have Love's, Hip Barbecue. Oh, that's amazing. The classic Colonel Sanders. This old Taco Bell sign. Hey, look, Toronto McDonald. And that's one of the original Palomino signs and Palomino shirts, which they sell here. And then speaking of the Palomino, that was the golden microphone, or the golden microphone cable. Look, there you can see in some old tickets, Elvis Costello, Jack Mack and the Heart Attack, Gene Watson. There's the cash register from the old Palomino. And then look at this. Look who all was going to perform here on this list, on this photo. You got Johnny Paycheck, Charlie Rich, Tex Williams. Wow. What a honey of a lineup. And then I mentioned that Nudie was responsible for doing that little coach wagon for Roy Rogers and Dale Evans Museum. And this whole section is remembering Nudie. And a lot of his customers would give him belt buckles when he would make something special for them. And they would it was customary for them to put their name on the belt buckle when they gave it to him. This one's from John Wayne. John the Duke Wayne. That one's from Clark Gable. And then obviously this one's from Dick Clark. And if you're not a country fan, that's probably what you recognize Nudie Cohen's work the most from. There's Nudie with Elvis wearing the gold lame suit. And those are Nudie's boots. Nudie grew up poor and never had matching shoes, so he believed that kept him humble, so he never let his two shoes match or his two boots match. It's Nudie's mandolin. He put out a mandolin record. They, I believe they still sell it here. I got it here once. And then that's the suit that Nudie made for Graham Parsons. It's got marijuana leaves, it's got the Christian cross on there, it's got quaaludes, it's got 
lips and everything Graham loved. And there's Nudie with John Wayne. Then I really need to do a vlog on this place, but that is the sign from the Starwood. Owned by Eddie Nash. Look at all this. Autographs from Fleetwood Mac. There's some of the Money Talks ACDC money. Blue Oyster Cult on tour forever. And that's for Chuck Landis, also Wolf and Riss Miller Country Club. Now let's go in the fun room. This is where all the bigger signs are, all the automobiles. And I'm already seeing automobiles that I didn't see last time I was here, that I, at least I don't remember seeing them, so. Great, oh, the original Palomino sign. I ran into Tommy outside, the guy who owns this, and he told me they're gonna do another Palomino kind of celebration next year. And I wasn't able to go to it because they had partnered up with another crew that wanted to film it all themselves. And um, this time he said, Jordan, we're gonna have you involved. So I appreciate that because I truly appreciate the history of the Palomino. And there's one of the original signs up there. If the Palomino sounds familiar, but you didn't see my vlog on it, go watch the vlog. But it was also in Every Which Way But Loose. Clint Eastwood. This is fantastic. I just love seeing that sign. That was just a staple country bar in the valley. I mean, everybody who was anybody performed there. They said Elvis even went there to see people perform. Keith Richards would pop in to see people perform. Graham Parsons used to perform on that stage. Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash. They said one night Johnny Cash was up on the stage performing, somebody started heckling him. He told the guy, if you think you can do it better, come on up here. And when the guy went to get on stage, Johnny took his acoustic guitar off and smashed it over the guy's head. Never did find out if that guy was any better than Johnny or not. Oh, look there. Oh, I didn't notice that. He's got the Norman's Rare Guitar sign. That's a really famous guitar shop out here, but I recognize it from watching uh, Spinal Tap. He's wearing a Norman's Rare Guitar shirt in Spinal Tap during one of the interviews. And of course, like I said, free video games, but not just any video games, original pinball. I love it. That's a great sign. Merle West rug cleaners. If you didn't see the rug cleaners thing, you'd think it was like a Western wear store, wouldn't you? And then Nacho's Fresh Mexican. And then back here, that's a Kent Bash painted car with Johnny Carson over here on this, <laughs> on this extra piece. Here you can see Eleanor Roosevelt, James Dean is even over on this end. interesting and I don't know what the story is on this car other than my dad had one it's an Opel GT but I don't know if it was owned by someone famous or what but yeah my dad had one of these. I was actually just talking about this recently to Eric Singer. I love that sign up top. You see it? My brother's dining room. He's banging that dinner bell. Pretty cool old milk truck. If you can't have a whole muffler man, at least have his head. Oh, check this out, by the way. Look all the way up there at the top. It's the Ben Franks sign. Ben Franks was kind of like a hippie hangout for people like John Lennon and Bob Dylan. That's where 
when they were casting the monkeys, they said they were looking for Ben Franks types. Oh, that's a great sign, Paladinos. Okay, that is not the same as Palominos. Paladinos, when I first moved out here, that's where all the tribute bands used to perform. So every single night they had multiple bands of people that dressed up like other famous bands. And I went out to see the Guns N' Roses uh, tribute band out there and I completely got lost on the bus system out here. Never did make it to Paladinos. Sadly, this must be a really recent addition because they just tore this down. And take a look at that. There's Nudie's station wagon. <laughs> I always love showing that. Only Nudie would design a car with guns, horseshoes, and horns out front. But it's got his name still on the license plate. Take a look. Nudie. And don't worry, if you're riding in the back, he thought of you as well. See? <laughs> Just uh, open your door and reach back and grab that. Then look at the back. I seriously love this place. You could easily spend two, three hours walking through and just taking in each case of memorabilia and all the literature that goes along with each piece. But I just wanted to give you kind of like a little crash course of what I love about coming here. Now let's go see if we can find Tommy, see what he's been up to. All right, Tommy, I just made my way through the museum. You know, this is one of my favorite places in all of Los Angeles. I was even describing to people that watch what, why the valley is such a big deal. Like, it really should be its own city, really. It really should. It, it really should. And, you know, it's so funny, over the years, the valley always gets like a bad rap or it's the butt of a joke. And I always tell people that we had the BMX tracks here. Uh, on the other side of the hill, they had the ocean, the water. So we emptied the pools and we did the whole skateboarding thing. But from race cars to rocket engines to manufacturing Camaros, um, having Morant, Super Scope, um, Fisher, Infinity. I mean, so many cool products have been made here. A lot of great movies, pop culture movies have been filmed here. And since a lot of people that watch my channel love that stuff, a lot of the celebrities and movie stars had to get out of Beverly Hills and get out of the city to come live out here so they could have horse ranches and, and get a little bit of privacy. So this was just crawling with celebrities. Well, it, it, yes, for example, uh, Lucio Ball and Desi Arnaz, I'm sure you talked about, they were married yeah. in Canoga Park. They got married for a second time in Canoga Park, had a ranch in Chatsworth, James Cagney, you know, everybody, a, a lot of celebrities lived here. And, you know, back uh, early on, California was one of the first uh, states to legalize horse racing. And that's really? why you would find a lot of celebrities moving to the valley into a place that was very rural and they didn't have to move to Kentucky or Tennessee because you had horse ranches here, a lot of open spaces. And yeah, and of course, as it became more urbanized and, uh, you know, celebrities started to and there's still a lot of celebrities that live here and it is a special place. And uh, as we saw in the museum, I mean, as you walk through, you see everything in the valley's history like the horse where you can see all the horse imagery and and just everything that made it what it was yeah from hot rods to malibu grand prix to bmx bikes to nudie cone <laughs> yeah i mean how crazy is that and to see a lot of those you know hollywood props and people go we well, got to kind of be from the valley to appreciate that but when we made rocket engines and war planes and cars. And back to the future. And back to the future. <laughs> That's global. Our history is global. And um, so the museum is spotlighting that. I really wanted to make history fun and have history that you can touch, that you can feel. And you know, when you stand next to like the Palomino sign, for God's sakes, yeah. from Johnny Cash to you name it, played there. Even Elvis Presley made. Linda Ronstadt did the open mics. Oh man, a lot of people. I mean, I saw the Chili Peppers play and Elvis Costello. But yes, you had the big, big country western music stars that got their start there. Dwight Yoakam, I mean, come on. Yeah. And, uh, so to be able to actually see that stuff here and take a photograph with it, and learn about our culture I think is really important and it makes it fun. And you have two airplane hangers here worth of stuff. How hard has it been on you being someone who does this for the love of the valley 
and not being able to have this open for the last couple of months until recently. So we're very, we're, we're a very responsible museum. We are a nonprofit. And over the last couple of years with moving into the new airplane hangar, which is really expensive, yeah. um, we were able to save money that we wanted to eventually put towards buying a building somewhere down the line or have money in the bank for an emergency. Um, being closed for four months, we pretty much spent all of our money, it's about $12,000 a month for the two hangers. On top of the insurance and with all the neon, the water, the power, the electricity. Right. So it's been tough. Um, so, you know, the fact we are a hangar by, you know, an airplane can basically drive through an airplane hangar. That's what they're yeah. designed for. So by opening all the hangar doors, opening the roll-up doors, and being outside, you know, allows us to have not only our patio area, where you can eat, um, like you do today in LA, everyone's eating out on the street yeah. the patio, which we are doing, and then our retail store as well. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a struggle, but I think because of the strong community support, people have been making small donations to large financial donations, um, people have been buying memberships, and of course the physical donations never stop. People sending postcards, photographs, uh, eight millimeter film, I yeah. mean, you name it, and as you can see, even though I spearheaded the Valley Relics Museum, um, it's really community driven. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite places too. It's one of my favorite places and to put it out there for people, I don't really know of any other museums that are open right now. So you have a really unique we do. layout because here, but also, I mean, situation where- It's an open air experience. I don't, uh, what a lot of other museums they're in a, a closed box. Yeah. And here, like I said, we're opening, I mean, the entire hangar doors. And like I was saying, it, you can take two to three hours to work your way through here if you stop and read everything and take everything in. And if you if you feel like sometimes it's overwhelming, you take a step over to the other room and play some video games for a while. Yeah, free arcade play. And you know, I gotta tell you, you know, it's a, it's a fun place to hang out. You can spend 20 minutes here, or you can spend three hours here. And it's always a work in progress. We're always adding new stuff. We're a museum where we've been preserving and rescuing items for about 20 years. We became a nonprofit eight years ago. Shortly after that, we opened up our first location in Chatsworth where you were at. Yeah. Came and visited us, which we always enjoy having you here. And um, so yeah, it's a very, very unique space that allows us to convert our building into a large patio. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed our little field trip today. I'm so happy to get to be back in this place. Hope you enjoyed our day here too. Thank you Patrick Day and Alan Coberly for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all next time. Good night!